be, they'll be grafting for that as well. As we are on the way here at Holker Street, Barrow attacking from left to right in the first half, wearing their white shirts with the blue sleeves and that blue stripe down the side, blue shorts and the blue socks, black on their traditional all tangerine kit, attacking towards the steelworks end. Having in possession with Sonny Carey, back to Callum Connolly, who sends that long switched ball out to the right hand side, searching for the run of Jensen Weir there, but it creeps out of play for a throw in to Barrow inside their own half. Both, both sides very much matching up in terms of, of, of formations, isn't it? It looks as though Owen Dale is going to lead the line for Blackpool with uh, with Dembele and Sonny Carey just dropping that little bit deeper, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It looks like they've matched up perfectly here, but um, it should be a good game, Adam. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching Dembele when he burst onto the scene as well at uh, 16 years old uh, at Celtic. He was... He was unbelievable and everybody was like talking about him, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he's about. But yeah, it should be a good game for everybody. So it's Blackpool in possession again, threaded through to that right hand side. And here is Dembele now just showing some good footwork in the centre of that midfield. Knocks the ball back into the feet of Virtue. Now Kenny Dougal back to Virtual again. And inside it goes to Callum Connolly. Sonny Carey, good strong challenge coming in there from Lucas Stevenson making his debut. Blackpool have the ball again at the back inside their own half. Of course, just a reminder in the event of a draw this evening, we will go straight to a penalty shootout to decide who gets the bonus point in the uh, in the group game. And of course, it is also worth noting two previous meetings between Barrow and Blackpool have ended in nil-nil draws and resulted in penalties. Barrow, of course, winning the penalty shootout in the League Cup first round last season. And then kick-started their Football League campaign with a 0-0 draw and a penalty shootout defeat in this very competition at Bloomfield Road three seasons ago. Blackpool send the ball forward, cut out by James Chester. Jed Garner gets an opportunity on the halfway line, held up a bit too long there, looking for the run of, Dom, of, of David Worrell. And it's back in the end with Richard O'Donnell and the Blackpool goal. Just, just a, so avoiding that quick counter tap there, though, wasn't it? David Worrell maybe just not fully up to speed yet on his return from injury. Yeah, that's it. Because Blackpool are keeping the ball, Barrow are dropping deep, keeping the shape. We know they can do that. And Pete Ward, you can see straight away, he's, he's letting Blackpool have it because he, he'll know how good they are on the ball. But yeah, when you do that, get that counter attack opportunity, you need to squeeze up the pitch a little bit quicker. Blackpool fed the ball through and it's cut out by James Chester. He's clean, he's always blocked. Back out to Dominic Thompson on the left-hand side. Floats it into the box. James Chester back there again defending. Puts it behind. It's going to be the first corner of the game. Just three minutes in. In fact, no. It must have been a late flag there by the assistant referee. And it is going to be a free kick to Barrow. In fact, maybe he's given a goal kick there. I think he's given a goal kick. That was that was never a goal kick. And judging by their striker, Dale, as well, he was, he was livid. But, yeah, that was never a goal kick. That's what made me think that maybe there was a, a late flag in there from the assistant referee, but Josh Lewis has taken it to the goal kick early and he's going to send this ball forward for Barrow. Four minutes played, Barrow nil, Blackpool nil. No BBC Radio Cumbria Sport is Blackpool in possession again with Dem Bailey, just knocks the ball out to Jensen Weir, looking to release Owen Dale with the ball into that right-hand channel to Warren, chases it down well there for Barrow. Almost keeps it in play in the end, Owen Dale, to be fair to him, but does creep on to play for a goal kick. Yeah, it looks quick up front, Dale actually there against Warren, but I think Warren had it covered, just slowing down so he could just shield the ball, but it was an open opportunity for Blackfield there, just overhit pass. Already twice we've seen the, the bright footwork, isn't it, from from Karamoka Dembele, certainly still showing the, the ability that he had, as you say, when he, when he came onto the scene at just 16 years old. Yeah, you can see already straight away he's sharp and take the ball wherever because he knows he's comfortable on it. And oh, ball sent up the forward. Yeah. Duffus trying to get him behind there, but Epitita knocks it back to O'Donnell. He's putting the pressure there by Courtney Duffus, but in the end he controls it. And it's Callum Connolly now who will bring it out from that left side centre half roll. Knocks it inside to Epitita and the towering figure of his plays a one two with Kenny Dougal. And it's back out to. Callum Connolly, who captains the side. Again, back inside it goes to Et Petita, and the former Leighton Orient man will just stroll out from the back. Plays a 1 2 with Virtue. Now to Dembele, and back it goes again to Et Petita. 
just happy enough, just knocking the ball around casually at the back. Eventually, Sam Foley will step up and put the pressure on, and the ball forward is brought down by Elliot Newby. And he'll turn and knock it back into the feet of his goalkeeper, Josh Lewis. Yeah, I was just watching Adam Temple there, and he, I was watching him even be, while uh, Blackpool had the ball as well, and he was clapping and he was telling them to keep the shape. You can see him, he's, he's like not letting them squeeze too far forward, so it's obviously something they've worked on. And as soon as they won it back, that's exactly he just started standing up clapping, so it's obviously something they've worked on and something they've looked at that, Bar, uh, that Blackpool do. It does look as old Pete Wilde is taking up position at the, the top of the stand again, doesn't it, over on the... Brian Howard Smith stand on the far side. Yeah, usual position. Was it 20 minutes? He'll be down and down in the dugout probably. Got plays it into Stevenson. Nice little turn and pass from him into the feet of Rory Feely, who comes forward now for Barrow. Outside it goes again to Stevenson. Nice little Freddie ball to Worrell on this right hand side. Worrell delivers into the box, headed away by Epiteta. Again, it's closed down by Lucas Stevenson, and he's very much out there looking to impress, and he's he's done so so far. Yeah, and he's got to. Um, it's his debut, he's on loan from Liverpool, so he should be a good player. You'd expect him to be a good player, and Pete Wilde's brought him to the club for that reason. And But he's, he's coming into a squad, a team that's that's flying in the league. He's got to make an impression in these games if he wants to get in that league team as well. And his first his first ever senior loan move for Lucas Stevenson, but as you say, he's a player that is held in high regard at Liverpool. He's, he's captained the under-21 side recently and only last summer was, was awarded a, a new deal by the club, so very much shows that they're wanting to really see his development now, isn't he, in this move? Yeah, and like we said with James and Grandy as well, this is he needs the, the men's football. That's probably what they've looked at. They, they know he'll be good at academy level and under-21 level, and that's why he's captain, and that's why he, he, he got that new deal. It's just he needs to go out and get that experience of what it's like to play in these sort of games. All goes forward there by Blackpool over hits. Going to run out of play for a barrel throw in inside their own half. We've played seven and a half minutes in this first half here at Holker Street. Still Barrel nil, Blackpool nil on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. There has been a goal early in the uh, EFL Trophy though. Northampton have taken the lead against Oxford United and by one goal to nil there. Tiny Simpson penalty on four minutes separating the two sides. Sam Foley again knocks the ball back to Josh Lewis inside the barrel goal. Just takes a couple of touches inside his penalty area. No one really making a move for him yet. And eventually has to send the ball long looking for Courtney Duffus. It's headed away by Doug Tham. Barrel get possession back again. Sam Foley into Jed Garner, but... Again, some good defending work there by Blackpool. Feely will just flick it back to James Chester. And now it's back with Josh Lewis in the barrel goal. So it's a nice feeling finally being able to say the name James Chester after so many times covering Barrow with him having to be referred to as experienced trialist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's been it's been a while, hasn't it? And it's been one in the making, but yeah, apparently he's been doing well in training and um while he's on trial with the club as well, so he's a, he's a great coup for Barrow, and if he can stay injury-free, I think what'll be, it'll be an absolute fantastic signing. Barrow have it at the back again with Josh Lewis inside his penalty area, sends it long out to this left-hand side, and again, it's Tharma who gets there ahead of Courtney Duffus. Barrow pick up the second ball, though, and it's Elite Newby. Inside it goes to Gotts, now back with James Chester into Stevenson, just rides off a challenge and then knocks it across to Rory Feely who'll look to try and release David Worrell with the ball down the line it's just going to run all the way through goes on a plate, it's going to be a Blackpool goal kick still 0-0 goal kick taken quickly and it's into the feet now of Marvin Petita who brings the ball forward I hope that's not the sound of a drum from the Barrow end here at Hulker Street I think it is. <laughs> this Connolly knocks it inside to his goalkeeper, Richard O'Donnell. Sends the ball long up to this left-hand side. Look at the Dominic Thompson who stretches out the foot. Can't get it under control and it's out of play and it's going to be a barrel throw. Ten minutes in to this first half here at Holker Street. Still goalless. Yeah, 
they've tried that a few times already in the first 10 minutes like the big switch from the center half they keep it they keep it for a while slow to play down then you want you can see the two wingers are really high and they try and hit the on the diag straight away but they just over hit it the last few times but it's something that they've obviously they're looking at to do as well final throw which is launched forward there by Rory Feely flicked on by Courtney Duffus Jed Garner trying to turn there but Blackpool get the possession back and it's across to Doug Farm who carries it forward sends it out to that right hand side now into the feet of Owen Dale goes down under a challenge there from James Chester and it will be a, a Blackpool free kick inside the barrel half just towards that right hand side which is taken quickly into the feet of Epiteta and now it's Connolly will come forward inside it goes to Kenny Dougal holds it up and then releases a great ball into the box Barrow need to be careful here it's Dominic Thompson hooks the ball back here for Sonny Carey who just couldn't get the shot away comes back to Dougal now Connolly into Dougal Carey will knock out to this left hand side now here for Dominic Thompson Barrow at the minute just standing well Connolly sprays it across now and it's with Virtue now Doug Farm, Barrow initially surviving the early onslaught, but Blackpool coming again with Dembele, and he's clipped down. It's going to be a free kick right on the corner of the penalty area, but very much a dangerous delivery there from Blackpool. Thankfully for Barrow, no one getting on the end of it. It was, it, it, with their wingers that that high, like I was saying before, it's, it's, it's they've obviously looked at the spacing behind the wing-backs, and that's what it was there. Great, great run, and um, to be fair, strikers should be gambling earlier, but, yeah... Barrow got lucky there. It was a good bit of play by Blackpool. You expected to see Jensen Weir pull the trigger there, didn't you? He was in such a great position. And as you said, there was no one in a in a tangerine shirt to get on the end of a pullback, but I suppose that's the thankful for Barrow that he did try that pullback in there. Yeah, exactly, and he would expect a striker to be there, someone like Dale or even Thompson coming in at the back post a bit quicker. He's a free kick, though, in a good position. Sonny Carey runs over it. It's Dembele who hits it. Gets it over the bar out of play for a, a goal kick to battle. It's certainly, first up, first real scare there for Barrow at the back, and I'd say it's more a case of they've got lucky there. Yeah, I think they have. Um, should have, should have been punished a little bit more than that, I reckon. So, but yeah, the, I think Barrow just need to squeeze a little bit higher, get up, get up the pitch, and not let, him, let not let Blackpool have it so easy because they can just pick a pass like that. It'll be a goal kick which Josh Lewis once again prepares to take. BBC Radio Cumbria Sport here at Holker Street. Don't forget, I'm coming across on all frequencies, but just prior to the start of the Carlisle United game, you will need to switch. It's here come Blackpool again into the box for a strike on goal there in the end from Dembele. Just gets it wrong though, goes out of play. But again, Blackpool getting in just far too easily there. It was, and it, it, it came from um, Josh Lewis's kick and their defender headed it away and James Chester had like, come over when I don't think he really needed to into Rory Feely's space. Feely headed it and that's when it got in behind that way because Chester was out of position, but I expect um, Dembele to be doing uh, better there, especially on his left foot. Still nil no, no, but another bit of surviving there for Barrows. Lewis's ball forward again is cut out by Connolly. Inside it goes, challenged by James Chester, and now Robbie Gotts will just touch it back to Josh Lewis, who captains Barrow this evening. Just carries it out to the edge of his penalty area, and now will look to send the ball forward into the Blackpool half. Again, Cockney Duffus is the target, being wrestled there by Doug Farm. No free kick given. Blackpool come forward, offside flight goes up against Owen Dale. It is going to be a free kick to Barrow. Yeah, it could have been a free kick to, to Barrow earlier on, Duffers, but I don't know, I think that's 15 minutes now. I don't think they've gone short, they've gone long every time, and they haven't they haven't won ahead of yet. There's two strikers or Duffers up front, who, you, who your target man is, really, instead of Garner, and I think he just needs to do a little bit better, be a bit more of a presence and get himself put himself about a bit more, because it, it just shows that it dropped to a ba uh, Blackpool player, and the correct ball, the correct run, and they were in easily. So it just needs to be win some headers or play it a little bit shorter. It's certainly one of those now, isn't it, for the strikers? I mean, for Jed Garner, the Courtney Duffers tonight, you you really do need to try and stand out and impress. Something like six forwards now that Barrow have on the books this season with the arrival of, of, of Dom Telford, of course. Absolutely, and you look at Aqua, who's 
who's been immense since he's come in as well, and I, I'm a massive fan of Proctor. I think he just sets everything up for Barrow as well. His hold-up play is unbelievable, so you've got to come into these games, yeah, and if you're Garner and Duffers here, you've got to show something really exceptional, but a goal maybe, and hopefully, and then you'll get a bit of confidence and that, yeah, that's how you've got to show your manager what you're about. It's going to be a free kick to Barrow on the halfway line, which... Tyrrell Warren looks like he's going to be left to be the man to take. In fact, Robbie Gotts has just come back now, so he's going to deliver this ball forward. We've played 15 and a half minutes here in this first half. Everyone back in a long line there of tangerine shirts for Blackpool as Gotts delivers that ball forward. Jed Garner rises, does make contact with the ball, but it's dealt with easily. And Tyrrell Warren now will roll the ball back to his goalkeeper, Josh Lewis. Lewis now just carries it towards the edge of the penalty area. And eventually, sends that long ball again, looking for Courtney Duffus. Again, it's far too high there for Duffus, and Sam will just drop back a couple of yards, win the header, and puts in out of play for a barrel throw in on this left-hand side. I mean, how long now would you give it before you start changing that tactic? Because it's clearly not working. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was just literally thinking the same thing, Adam. Um... Yeah, they've hit, tried to hit Duffus every time and he's lost it every time, Not sometimes not his own fault, but I would like to see him jump rather than try and wrestle. So again, the ball goes forward and Duffus this time does elevate himself, but the ball avoids everyone and Blackpool have it at the back again here with Dominic Thompson. But at, least, at least that time when you see him jump, he, it, he's, he's a monster. Whatever, um, whatever he's called. And... Um, it's, it's tough, but he, he put him off and the ball went through. And if Garner's gambling, he could get on it. It's just, I'd like to see him jump a little bit more rather than wrestle with the, the centre-backs. Epiteta again knocks it into Dembele. Back it goes again to Epiteta. And now it's Callum Connolly, still goalless here at Hulker Street. Oxford have equalised against Northampton. They won all the scoreline in that one. The other early kickoffs all goalless at the minute in the first half of the AFL Trophy action. Callum getting underway, of course, at quarter to eight. The ball goes forward and it's touched down a play by Robbie Gotts. And it is going to be another corner here for Blackpool in the 18th minute. Yeah, good tracking by Gotts, to be fair, recognised the midfield runners running past running past the strikers. You've got you've got to do that dirty work as well. And goes out for a corner, but good good tracking is tracking his runner. Corner to be taken out on this. Right hand side, plenty of players inside the penalty box. Battle with everyone back as the corner comes right into the mix. James Chester gets up onto the chest of Elliot Newby. He can only slice it up into the air and eventually barrel clear onto the feet of Dominic Thompson. But his flick carries out of play and it will be a throw into Barrow over on that left hand side. Again, just a bit of panic defending there from Barrow, isn't it? Instead of just you know being composed like we have seen them at times this season. Yeah, it is, and I don't know why. They just don't seem to have started this game like like they normally do, like we've seen in, in the league, and it just doesn't seem much intensity. Throwing taken by Barrow into James Chester, and now it's back with Josh Lillis. Inside the Barrow goal, sends it long again. This time, David Worrell is the target. Dominic Thompson gets out ahead of him, and now Blackpool get the ball back out to Thompson on this left-hand side. Back into the feet of Callum Connolly, now into Ekpeteta. He just takes his strides forward to the halfway line and then sends the ball through for Dan Bailey. Nice little touch from him out to Jensen Weir on the right. Bit of space for him to run into. Back inside to Dan Bailey and now into Virtue. Pushing towards the corner of the penalty area. Dan Bailey will turn against Sam Foley. Goes down inside the area. Still in possession, Blackpool with Dominic Thompson. Now inside it goes to Dougal, back to Thompson, and eventually uh, the referee, Matt Cole, will bring a halt to it because Dembele is still down in some discomfort in the penalty area. The medical team will be called on to see him. Yeah, I don't think he's appealing for anything. He was inside the box. I don't think he's appealing for any uh, penalty or anything like that, but I think he looks like he's, he's holding his hand or something. He might, he, whether he got stood on or anything like that, I'm not sure, but if he's not that hurt, he should have got up because his team were on the attack, but... You, you never know. It is an interesting one to see the referee bring a halt to it, isn't it? Because normally that's only limited to head injuries or what the referee would consider to be, you know, a serious, serious injury in there. It, does, it doesn't look, as you say, to be 
that serious concern. It certainly isn't a head injury. He is getting himself back to his feet again now and just makes it a strange one that the referee would bring a halt to play in that proceeding. Yeah, it was. And like you say, if he's not injured, get up because your team was on the attack. But yeah, from, from a referee's point of view, there was there was no need to stop it at all. But he was rolling around and throwing his arm around and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. He's back to his, he's back to his feet, Kenham Oko Dembele, and he's being walked across to the touchline by the Blackpool medical team. Dominic Thompson will just throw the ball back into the hands of Matt Cole at the referee, who's carrying the ball towards the halfway line. Is that where they were stood when the referee blew the whistle? I don't think so. Just drops the ball down at the feet of Dominic Thompson and play gets back underway again. Still 0-0 nil -nil the scoreline. 21 minutes played in this first half here at Holker Street. And Billy's looking like he's set to come back on. And it's Blackpool now inside in the feet of Epiteta. Into Connolly now, back to Epiteta again. Inside their own half, just in that centre-half position, carries it towards the halfway line, then sends a Long ball looking for the run of Dominic Thompson. David Worrell will just chest it back to his goalkeeper, Josh Lewis. And then Belly will come back onto the field. So, Blackpool back to the full quota of 11 men. Yeah, good defending by Worrell there, actually. It's that diagonal ball that they've been looking for all the time. And chest it back to his goalkeeper, nice and calm. All goes forward from Lewis. Jed Garner rising against Epiteta. Comes to Robbie Gotts. And again, Courtney Duffus, second best to the ball. Blackpool clear. Warren will just retreat back and then knocks it back into the feet of his goalkeeper, Josh Lewis. Now outside to Rory Feely. Feely playing the ball off Sonny Carey, then moving inside. Finds Sam Foley, Foley into the feet of Jed Garner. Now James Chester gets it out to Tyrrell Warren out on that left side centre half roll. Plays it into Elliot Newby. It's a over hit back pass there from Newby, which Warren has to retreat back to. And again, it's back with Jostelis in the barrel goal. And very much a lot like last week now in the in the Lancashire in the Lancashire Cup final. And it was, I know it was something that annoyed now Canavan when he was on commentary with me. It was that the amount of times that Barrow played the ball backwards, and they're doing a lot of that tonight. Although they do have the ball here now inside the Blackpool half with Robbie Gotts into Sam Foley. Foley threads it into Lucas Stevenson, lifts it into the area, cleared away. Blackpool battling now in possession and they have it back inside their own half but is very much again a similar tactic to what they seem to be employing here is a lot of backward passes as opposed to maybe showing that ambition trying to get the ball forward yeah I think I, would, I was going to say the same before there was a, it went into Jed Garn and got laid off to I think it was Foley and he went back he went backwards it was, and Robbie Gotts was screaming at him he was more of an advanced position and that's what it is. You've got to, you've got to take these games in this, especially if you want to get in that league side that that's flying in the league as well. You've got to show a bit of intensity and that you want to be involved. And it's just it's just not happening. It's too easy. This ball bounces off Jake Garner, goes out of play for a Blackpool throw, which is taken quickly. Back into the feet of Ed Pateta, and now it's Callum Connolly outside to Thompson on his left hand side into the middle. It goes with Kenny Dougal. Now back with Callum Connolly. Back into the feet of Ekpateta, who brings the ball forward again from the back. Knocks it outside to Doug Tham, and now it's Dembele. Plays it through there, looking for Owen Dale. Cleared by James Chester, Robbie Gotts tries to flick it in the middle for Sam Foley. And we'll get possession back again now, and it's Courtney Duffus holding it up on the halfway line with his bright pink boots. And now it's outside to David Worrell. Inside to Rory Feely, getting the appreciation from the supporters for the the passing move here. Outside to Tyrrell Warren, his ball through those cut out, and here come Blackpool now wading forward here, and it's a good run there by Jensen Weir. Now Virtue gets it out to Dembele, down the line it goes for Virtue, sends a deep ball into the box, Warren taking no chances with a diving header behind for a Blackpool corner. Yeah, it just comes from a sloppy pass from Warren as well, and I think that's what it is. It's just there's no intensity, intensity from anybody, and as soon as somebody gives it away, they don't get it back, and then it's just too easy for Blackpool at the minute, and Barrow need to just sharpen up. Corner taken short. 
out with Dembele over on the far side and then knocks it into the feet of Callum Connolly but Barrow again can squeeze possession away but Blackpool have that loose ball now on the halfway line with Dominic Thompson chips it out towards the right hand side but that's going to run out of play it is going to be a throw into Barrow over on the left hand side 25 minutes on the clock here EFL Trophy action, still Barrow nil, Blackpool nil. You can get involved with the show, 81333. Start the message with the word Cumbria. You can tweet at BBC Cumbria Sport, or you can get us on WhatsApp, 08321 Again, start your message with the word Cumbria. And don't forget, as a reminder, if you are wanting to continue listening to commentary here from Holker Street, you need to make sure that you have your radio on... AM frequencies or DAB plus because from around 20 to 7 we will be switching and if you are listening via FM or Freeview Channel 721 you will be heading to the WAM Stadium for Accrington Stanley against Carlisle United it's Blackpool in possession inside their own half here with Marvin at Pateta got the attendance through early 1,436 with 202 of those who have made the trip from Blackpool. And it's Blackpool in possession inside the barrel half now with Owen Dale. Outside to Weir, it's a deep ball into the area. Rory Feely can only slice it up into the air and eventually it's cleared away by Jed Garner. And Blackpool get possession back again on the halfway line, but again, getting a lot of space out on that right-hand side. Yeah, they are. it was a wicked ball in as well, to be fair, Feely did well. I know he just got it up in the air, but... It, 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 it was a difficult one to deal with and he did well to get it away great challenge from Lucas Stevenson on the halfway line and Barrow now have it with Jed Garner back it goes to Rory Feely to Worrell David Worrell taking a touch then knocks it back inside for Jed Garner across to Robbie Gotts nice build up play here from Barrow Gotts out to Elliot Newby over on the left hand side takes a couple of touches delivers a ball into the box onto the head of Doug Tham it's going to be picked up again now by Rory Feely on the halfway line. Just carries the ball away from Owen Dale and then gets it out to Tyrrell Warren. The referee will bring it back for the foul on Rory Feely. There will be a free kick to Barrow on the halfway line. But just shows, doesn't it, when Barrow do get the ball down and, and, and really have a go up that pool, they, they certainly can make it matter. Yeah, it just comes from Warrell, just playing it inside to Garner. He turns rather than going back first time or anything like that, he turns and we go out the other side and get across in the box but it obviously led to nothing but it was a lot better than the first 25 minutes that we've watched so far so here come Barrow again, Robbie Gotts again outside to Elliot Newby over on this left hand side couple of step overs from Newby brings it to the byline, delivers it into the box towards Dullfish, it's headed away again by Doug Tham for a throw into Barrow deep inside the Blackpool half on this left hand side yeah better play again, Gotts out to Newby and we know he can go either way, he can go left or right foot and it keeps the defender guessing. First opportunity for Rory Feely to deliver one of his trademark long throws into the penalty area here. James Chester has made his way into the box. Tyrrell Warren just stands on his own on the halfway line for Barrow as Feely does launch it in towards James Chester. It's cleared away there by Blackpool, a big booming clearance as Robbie got flicks the ball back to Tyrrell Warren and he sends the ball long out looking for David Worrell Dominic Thompson certainly close to David Worrell there Worrell goes to the ground Jed Garner continues with the ball towards the touchline but it goes out of play and it will be a throw into Blackpool and Ian Everett no, no, no. Pete Wilder very much protesting the case with the fourth official that he felt that should have really been a free kick there for Barrow yeah I think it, it probably did look like a free kick and could have easily been given one but I don't think David Wall complained too much either. It's just one of them where you're backing in. Well, goes into a challenge there with Dominic Thompson. Just maybe a, a case of, yep, you can be strong with me, but I can be strong with you as well. And it has left Dominic Thompson down on the deck. It will be a, a throw into Blackpool when we resume. He gets back to his feet, and now it's his turn to turn and have a look towards the referee to say, well, here we go. Yeah, that's exactly it. There was we know we know he's good in the air, Warrell for a, for a small for a small guy as well. He's good in the air, but you can just I've been there myself, and you can just leave one on him when you're above them as well. It's, it's brilliant, but yeah, it wasn't a foul either. Still nil nil the scoreline here. Thirty minutes 
on the clock as the throwing goes down the line onto the head of Rory Feely. Sam Foley will just touch it on, but it just drops out of play for a throw-in to Blackpool. And on this left-hand side, which Dominic Thompson takes, the referee will say no. They're taking that from too far forward. Get yourself back a bit. And now gives him a, a warning towards his... Uh, choice of words towards the officials. Normally, normally, it's with the new directive, you would expect to see him not given the warning. You'd expect to see the, the card being shown straight away if it's, if it's that bad towards him. The long ball goes forward by it. Pateta and just drops out of play. Four goal hits a barrel. So the game's getting underway in the AFL Trophy. Wrexham against Newcastle on the 21s has just gone underway. Barnes against Grimsby also about to get underway there. Half seven kickoffs. Don't forget from quarter to eight, Carl United taking on Accrington Stanley on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. So again, just a reminder, if you are wanting to continue listening to commentary here from Holker Street, make sure that you're on DAB Plus and medium wave frequencies. FM and Freeview, we'll be getting James Phillips and Simon Grand from the Wham Stadium. As Barrow give possession away into the feet there of Sonny Cairdy, who takes a shot, which is blocked. Work back out to Jensen Weir on the right-hand side. Now Matty Virtue, good deep delivery into the area. Again, Barrow clear, only as far as Callum Connolly. Now Dembele, Barrow again clear, and eventually a foul on Sam Fall, and it will be a free kick to Barrow, and again, Barrow surviving. Yeah, they did, and it was it was Foley again. I know he's just got the foul, but it was him him with the block on the edge of the on the edge of the box as well. It was Chester that gave it away, and the other shot, but luckily um, Foley bailed him out a little bit. 32 minutes played here at Holker Street. Still Barrow nil, Blackpool nil. Josh Lewis getting ready to send the free kick forward here for Barrow. It's a, it's a long one again into the Blackpool half. Jed Garner, the target this time, headed away. It's up by Sam Foley. Now Robbie Gotts out to Elliot Newby. Tyrrell Warren down the line it goes again for Robbie Gotts. Now it's into the feet of Courtney Duffus on the edge of the area, takes a shot on, and in the end it bubbles into the hands of Richard O'Donnell. Much better plays. He comes from, I know he said about Lillis's kicks as well, but Ekpatete, he wins the header this time, but because you're literally 20 yards further up the pitch, it falls to Foley, and a little bit of one-two around the box and gets a shot away. Much better. Yeah, certainly push bodies forward now, haven't they, Barrow, and just looking that bit more attacking aren't they instead of setting back and seeing what Blackpool offered you think maybe the the way that Blackpool did things in the pre-season friendly has given Barrow that bit of a thought of you know being too wary regards throwing bodies forward yeah maybe and it might be something that Pete Wilde's worked on and said keep them out keep them quiet or sit off them for a bit and then we'll compress them but they're coming here then barely threads the ball through here for Owen Dale, who's got in space, puts the ball into the side netting. It must have taken a touch on a barrel man, though, and it is going to be a corner here for Blackpool. Yeah, I don't know if Lily saved it or it was Feely getting across, but uh, one of them blocked it so good. But good bit of play from uh, Blackpool, to be fair. Brought the lines, then Bailey's in between midfielders and centre backs and just picks a pass out, but good block or, or good save. Don't, couldn't see which one it was. It's a corner here for Blackpool. 34th minute here at Holker Street. Corner swung in from the right into the penalty area. Flicks off the top of the head of James Chester. David Worrell trying to clear his lines. Now it's Lucas Stevenson at the back there cleaning up. And now here come Barrow with Courtney Duffus. He just wades forward there. He's brought down by Douglas Tharm. It will be a free kick to Barrow. I think we're going to see the first card of the evening as well here being produced to the Blackpool centre-half, Douglas Tharm. Yeah, it has to be a card, and it's a foul on Duffers to stop him from progressing up the pitch. But uh, Lucas Stevenson, two great headers in, inside his own his, inside his own box to clear as well, so he did, did brilliantly to clear it out. Another card produced to the Blackpool centre half. First time that Courtney Duffers has got the better of him as well this evening, and it's with the ball at feet, which, as we were saying earlier, it's it's finally reverting back to that tactic. Yeah, it is, and this is where it is now. He's he's a centre-back, he's been booked. You play on him a little bit more and try and get around him and them little one-twos, and hopefully he does give, a, give another foul away. It's David Worrell with the free kick here for Barrow. Takes it short into the feet yeah, there of Roby Feely. Flag goes up, though, and it is going to be a free kick to Blackpool. He was offside and 
it was a great great free kick by Worrell. He's just two switched on and Rory Feely maybe as a centre back playing in a centre forward's position, but was just on his heels. As it's inside in the middle, we are due to split. So once again, a reminder, if you are wanting to listen to commentary here from Holker Street, make sure you're on DAB Plus and on medium wave frequencies because listeners on FM and Freeview are about to join James Phillips and the former Carlisle and Barrow defender Simon Grand at the WAM Stadium for Accrington against Carlisle United. So once again, if you want to be continuing here at Holker Street, make sure you're on DAB Plus and on medium wave. Blackpool have it with Sonny Carey. Inside it goes to Kenny Dougal. It's a good lifted ball over the top. Then barely stretching a foot into the hands of Josh Lewis. And this game suddenly has opened up massively. Jason Walker. Yeah, it is. It's coming to life a little bit. Every both teams are going for it a little bit more. They're, Blackpool are trying that little one in behind now as well. You can see from from out to in, Dembele and um, Carey as well. They're coming from out to in. Not Carey, sorry, Dale as well coming out from in and making a running behind and. Yeah, it's opening up and making up for a lot better game than we've seen so far. Blackpool have it inside their own half. Douglas Tharm up against Courtney Duffus, lifts the ball for and it's out of play. It is going to be a throw-in to Barrow on the halfway line. As it's thrown now into the feet of James Chester here now for Barrow. Inside it goes to Rory Feely. Now Lucas Stevenson, a great ball over the top from him. David Worrell just couldn't quite get there. Callum Connolly did a great job to shield up and wins a free kick. But what a ball that was from Lucas Stevenson. It was, it was brilliant. Cause he, you don't see it much when you're, when you're watching, but um, he took the touch and at the corner of his eye, so he's aware, he's already had that look before the ball comes to him, that Worrell's spun in behind and he, to, to recognise it and do it at the same time, fantastic. And that's showing what he's about. This is Douglas Thompson now on this left-hand side, inside it goes to Sonny Carey, now back to Callum Connolly. Marvin Epiteta just carrying the ball across from the back, inside it goes to Kenny Dougal, the Australian international will just touch it on to Matty Virtue, comes back out to the right-hand side for Douglas Tharm, and now it's back again with Virtue inside his own half, just happily keeping possession, Blackpool just looking for that opportunity to release Barrow have just got their their shape right now, haven't they? They're, you know, they are looking a lot more balanced and a lot more structured inside there. They are. They, they were probably about ten yards up further up the pitch as well. It was too easy for Blackpool earlier on, but they are putting a lot more pressure. You see, Foley's the one pressing the, the centre backs now as well. So Blackpool again forced back into their own half with Marvinette Pateta. who's played 38 minutes, still Barrow nil, Blackpool nil here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports. Um, Fred the ball forward, now it's back again here with Ek Pateta. Looking for the run there of Jensen Weir, who peeled off on that right-hand side, but it's an overhit ball, and it is out of play for a throw into Barrow over on the left-hand side. Yeah, I think Weir was looking for inside the, inside the full-back there, really, and Ek Pateta played it on the outside. Another goal on the AFL Trophy, Forest Green leading by one goal to nil against Shrewsbury this evening all the rest still goalless don't forget quarter to eight Cal United taking on Accrington Stanley at the Wham Stadium this game of course one of the think, five or six games that got underway at, at seven o'clock this evening it's Barrow have it with Elliot Newby back it goes to Robbie Feely Feely of course the only player involved from the start tonight that was involved at the weekend from the start and that 1-0 win against Harrogate of course no league action for Barrow after today until the 16th of September when they make the trip to Newport so a massive break between now and then and I know, I know Pete Wilde said at the weekend that the players are, are very much needing of a, of a day off but it's 11 days without any action after tonight's game it kind of surprised a lot that there was that many changes yeah maybe you could have looked at it that way and, and gone no we've not got a game for 11, 11 days we're, we're going to play our, not our strongest team I don't want to be disrespectful to this one but the team that's been doing well in the league and won it on Saturday but it's one of them where we've, we've played a lot of games in August as well so it probably is a welcome rest for, for some of them Robbie Gotts is brought down on the halfway line will be a 
a free kick to Barrow. I think Jason Taylor and Adam Temple just having conversations with the fourth official there. They're feeling that maybe there could have been a card shown and the fourth official straight across to, to warn the Barrow bench over their conduct. You know, all three of them crowded round, didn't you? Pete Wilde, Adam Temple and Jason Taylor were all there in a line around the, the fourth official, Stuart Morland, but all three now back on the, on the bench. All forward from the free kick for Barrow, just bouncing around on the edge of the area and eventually Callum Connolly will touch it back to the goalkeeper, Richard O'Donnell. Rolls it out to Kenny Dougal, still goalless here into the final five minutes of this first half. Great chance by Robbie Gotts, referee pulls it back though for a foul and it will be a, a free kick to Blackpool on the halfway line. Yeah, the fourth official's still over there now, isn't he? I don't know what this must, something else must have been said. Yeah, the referee is now coming across to intervene. I wonder if we will see a card being produced here to the, the Barrow bench. A yellow card has been produced. I'm not too sure if that's in the direction of Pete Wilde, Adam Temple or Jason Taylor. It could well could be, be all three, three of them, in all <laughs> fairness. Uh, yeah, something else must have been said afterwards as well. The ball's cleared from the free kick, just bouncing around inside the area and eventually it carries through out of play and it is going to be a goal kick to Barrow. 41 and a half minutes played, still Barrow nil, Blackpool nil here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports. Approaching half-time. Rory Feely sends the ball forward, flag goes up. I think it's because it carried down a play from the delivery and it will be a throw-in to Blackpool inside their own half, which Dominic Thompson takes, throws it back to Pet Potato. Courtney Duffus almost cuts it out, but the clearance from Doug Tharm is intercepted by Robbie Gotts. Now Duffus gets it out to Elliot Newby on the left-hand side. Inside it goes to Robbie Gotts. Gotts squares it for Foley, who tries to poke it through there for Jed Garner on the edge of the area. Lucas Stevenson again diving into challenges, but it's Blackpool who wade forward with the ball now with Owen Dale. Good footwork here from the Blackpool forward. David Worrell gets back to make the challenge. Again, good bit of counter-attacking play there for Barrow. Just couldn't quite get that final ball this time. Yeah, it was. Just We know if Borley can hit them from there. Maybe he could have had a shot from there as well, but he tried the little one too. But just got to mention Feely there. A lot of people won't recognise it, but... Black, Blackpool on the counter-attack and Warren will get all the plaudits for taking the ball off him but you, you watch Feely slow him down Dale's quick as well so he's slowing him down slowing him down so one of his teammates can come and help him out it's absolutely brilliant defending Wrexham have taken the lead against Newcastle's under 21s on the 13th minute that's out of the games that have gone underway at half past seven here Barrow coming forward again with Robbie Gotts Brings it forward from the halfway line, then knocks it back into the feet of Sam Foley. Again, though, Barrow taking their eyes off the ball a little there, losing possession. Picked up now by James Chester. Into the feet of Jed Garner. Garner now goes across to Rory Feely into the final minute of this first half. Worrell into Lucas Stevenson. Back it goes again to David Worrell, now into Sam Foley. Good ball forward, got trying to find Courtney Duffus there with a the layoff, but again, it's Matty Virtue there to intercept for Blackpool, and now they come forward, threaded through there again into the feet of Owen Dale, across to Sonny Carey, nice bit of footwork from him, gets in on the his right foot, it's a great finish from Sonny Carey, shown far too much respect on the edge of the area, and he cuts through Barrow like a knife, threads it into the bottom corner of the goal and on the 45th minute it's Blackpool who get the opener they lead by one goal to nil here at Holker Street yeah you've got to hand it to Blackpool it was, it was a good counter attack and a uh, good play by the two strikers uh, Dale and Carey the, the finisher in the end but it comes it comes from um, Gotts in the final third in Blackpool's final third Gotts tried a little one one with Duffus and it doesn't when he could have just take a touch go out to Newby Newby's in so much space I don't know if it's communication or what it is or awareness but it's it just got to keep the ball I think you've got to keep it more up, up there up, up in Barrows up in Blackpool's final third and that's how you get punished either the league one side give the ball away anywhere on the pitch you get you get punished and that's what happens 
Barrow now are to get something from this game, be it victory or a penalty shootout. They're going to have to do something that they haven't done in their previous four meetings with Blackpool, and that is score a goal. 3 0 nil draws and a 2 0 defeat in an FA Cup tie in 1925 from the previous four meetings. Barrow now trailing here by one goal to nil. He's got two minutes of time added on to be played at the end of the first half, and Barrow have a throw in inside the Blackpool half, which Rory Feely is going to be the man to take over on the left hand side. So around the midway point in the half, it's going to go long low into the penalty area. James Chester gets up, flicks it on, but it just bounces into the hands of Richard O'Donnell. Just needed somebody to be making that run there, wasn't it? Jed Garner was the only one advanced. And even then, the ball went far too far away from them. Yeah, it's, that, that's it. Just, they seem to be quite far away. They seem to be quite spread out and not close to each other and playing together. It's, if somebody's going up for a header, you've got to have at least two or three, especially on one of them throwings, gambling. Blackpool come forward now here with Matty Virtue. He's gone in behind Tyrrell Warren. A bit too easy there. Cuts the ball across. It's deflected behind. It's going to be a corner to Blackpool, who are ending the first half very much in an ascendancy now on the back of that goal. They've got an opportunity here now with Sonny Kirby, the goal scorer, is going to be the man to deliver this corner in. And I mean, I know Blackpool have probably been the better side in this first half, but I mean, 2 0 would be an absolute sickener to battle. Yeah, it would. They have been the better team and they've created the better chances, but yeah, they need to see out this corner. Luckily, they've taken it short and gone right, right the way back, but they need to see out this corner because you don't want to be 2 0 down coming in the second half. They launched into the box, headed down, Barrow gave it clear. And as far as Kenny Dougal, we're into the last. 15 seconds of stoppage time. Connolly outside it goes to the goal scorer, Sonny Carey, who lifts it into the area. Deep ball again, headed to the edge of the box. Virtue gets up there with his foot. In the end, it's cleared, and there goes the half time whistle. And it's Sonny Carey's goal on the 45th minute, which sees Blackpool in front here at Holker Street. A great finish it was from Sonny Carey. But as we said, they probably have been the better team and it's it's going to give Pete Wilde something to say to his players now because once again, he's made the changes. It's up to these players to to show what they're capable of and at the minute, there's maybe a few of them that that haven't quite managed to do that yet. Yeah, I don't think he'll be, I don't think he'll be pleased at all and I think you, when you're coming in and you're wanting to impress the manager, you give it that extra 20% and to be fair, they look like they're about 20, 30, 30% 30 down really to what they should be, should be and he won't be happy with the intensity of, of that first half but we know what he's like, he'll go in there and normally we will see a different barrel come out and hopefully we do in the second half because they haven't been good enough, he knows that and Blackpool are there to, to be taken as well so it's not as if they're, they're out of the game it's just they need to up, up their own game yeah, it's definitely the case. I mean, when you look at the bench as well, I mean, in terms of changing it around there, I mean, you've got Dean Campbell there potentially in the midfield, but it is very much reliance, isn't it? If if the players in this start 11 don't do it, it's the young players that are going to have to step up to the plane. You expect them more than ever to, to be very keen to impress, especially if, you know, for someone like Sam Bellis, if, if Courtney Duffus and Jed Garner aren't pulling it out, he's very much going to be chomping to get out there to say, well, I'm here. Yeah, that's exactly it, and that's what they're there for, and yeah, that's what... And Pete Ward, if, if you're not doing it, he'll know that them young lads will, and that's what they're for, and I'm, i got, like, Etta Luca as well, I'm, I'm a big fan of his, he's come on, he looks lively all the time, and I've seen him in pre-season, he looks really good as well, so he's shown that he'll, he won't be afraid to throw him on either, but just going on, Dean Campbell there, it's... They're missing somebody like him, and obviously we've got you Tom White and Kean Spence, but you're missing someone like him in that midfield just to get his foot on the ball. It's you can see Jed Garner is getting deeper and deeper, which then isolates Duffus and it's like a knock-on effect. But he's he's the one that you're missing in there to just get the ball on the turn, then play it out and just get you get your team up the pitch. You certainly, I mean, in, in, in a word of it, I mean that's exactly what Lucas Stevenson has been doing, hasn't it? There's been many a time you've seen him first instant when he gets that ball he's sending it forward I mean David Worrell was, was probably unlucky with that one just before but he's, he's certainly impressing out there isn't he out this midfield for Barrow yeah I was going to say that before actually and um, he's probably the one one person that has impressed me the most actually he's, he's not afraid to put a tackle in either we've seen that he's, he's gone into flying into a few tackles and uh, not afraid to put his head in either and um, yeah, he's shown his passing ability, so he's he's been the shining light in the, in the first half. He just needs somebody in there with him to get his foot on the ball and help him out a little bit. 
Do you think that's, that's what it's going to take now in this second half? Do you think they need to throw a bit more caution to the wind and actually have a, have a bit more of a go? Because they do look rather placid at times, don't they? Yeah, and I, I, I fully expect them to as well. After half time with, with Pete Wilde, we know what he's like. I expect them to come out a totally different animal, and I reckon they'll be good 20 yards up the pitch, further up the pitch, pressing them a little bit higher. We can't let them have the ball that for that long at, at centre back at all. And I, I, yeah, I'm expecting to see a totally different barrow in the second half with a bit more intensity. Oh, battle fans, 81333, starting message with the word Cumbria. You can tweet at BBC Cumbria Sport. Get us on WhatsApp, 8000 Again, start your WhatsApp message with the word Cumbria. We'll be back for full second half commentary here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport, on DAB Plus, and on our medium wave frequencies. Barrel trailing at the break here at Holker Street. It's time to take in commentary now from Carlisle United. They are underway against Accrington Stanley at the Wham Stadium with the company of James Phillips and the former Carlisle and Barrow defender Simon Grant. Can only build confidence on that as well. 23, mobile, free kick to Carlisle. That little nibble on, um, I think it's McGeoch. Owns a free kick in the left back position for United. Yeah, 23, mobile, tall, um, muscular. What are you thinking if you're marking him? Yeah, it's not going to be an easy night, you wouldn't think. Um, I'd be passing him on to my partner at the back, I think, would be would be the case. Usually Danny lives here. Welcome to listeners on DAB and Medium Wave at half-time in the Barrow game. Former Barrow man Simon Grant in commentary with me, James Phillips, as Carlisle looked to get forward again with that flick on from Coyote. That's five out of five, one from him. This one into Ablay, down the right of the penalty area. Looks to cut it in back post. Good defensive header, and they'll get away. Accrington down the right-hand side, but that was nice work between Carlisle's new-look front line for this one. Good breakaway, though, down the right here, and it's good space for Lowe to get into for Accrington. Right to the Carlisle penalty area, tries to find the angle for the cross, cuts it back, finds a teammate in the area, laid off to the edge, shot towards the top corner, goes over. Well struck by Josh Woods, just leant back and tried to feed it into the top corner. Little bit too much lean, little bit too much loft, and it goes over, but it was good play from Lowe into Woods, and it might have been the opening goal there on another night. Yeah, both, both teams getting down the side of one another, really, looking to use pace and getting really good football down the side. Um, Yep, Lowe looks powerful, looks lively. And um, again, Coyote, what a start. He's won every single header. The only thing he's not done is getting that box at the moment. He's just, uh, won, he's won another. he's just won six out of six now. That one on the touchline. Driven ball across field. That's going to find touch on the far side. That was a little bit wild from Mills. I think that high press is just having early sort of impact on this game, isn't it? Because their back line just look, Accrington, like they want to get rid of it with a bit more urgency than I suspect they might play at all times. Yeah, look, and... We're sitting, he's won five headers, he's had five lump balls off the goalkeeper to him, but I can't tell you how, how good that is as a defender to see centre-forward that he's doing that and you can get up the pitch and you can build from it. it. It's a great base to build from. One of the absolutely crucial things Carlisle have been lacking in the early part of this season, Corey Whelan just under a little bit of pressure from Woods there with a stray pass towards Manich, out of plate on the right-hand side, middle of the Carlisle half. Just passed inside, Carlisle might have won that one back in half through Harris, but he can't keep hold of it. That's a lovely little nick there in the midfield from uh, number 12, Seb Quirk. Now the play it goes for a throw-in. Yeah, just at the moment, he's winning his headers. Keep putting it on him, let him win his headers, and then as the game stretches, let's see if we can start finding his feet and him bringing other players into the game. Well, he'll be looking at a 19 and 22-year-old central defensive partnership and thinking, I'll have these on toast. It's all about the reckon to can find another way. And they're trying to pass through Carlisle's midfield at the moment into the centre circle and then out to the left hand side. Well, Angelo will try and bring it forwards. Looks to go around his man. That's a soft free kick for me. Has given the free kick the referee. Put the ball round him and just ran straight into Finback. I mean, I always wonder there whether the fullbacks are supposed to step out of the way or you know what what's a foul and what's just holding your ground. Yeah, it's a difficult one. You, you can't really get out of the way, but he has blocked him, so oh yeah, it's one of them. It's the referee. Is he going to give him? Is he not going to give him? It's one of them now. He has to give every one of them. That's the issue. Yeah, he's sort of broken the seal on that one. Soft free kick early on here. I'm sure Accrington would feel it was a fair one. Looking to swing it in on the left foot of Jack Nolan. Into that Carlisle penalty area. United lined up on the edge. Now he's played it short to the edge of the penalty area and Carlisle have cut it out through McCalmont. Took a slightly heavy touch, but has managed to resurrect it. Then Chop turns back inside, gives it on to McGeoch. He steps up, being closed down. <sighs> Pass blind across the area there and the centre forward low was there and thankfully it missed him. Manish steps away from his man and into the midfield now. One of his slaloming runs. Ellis gets it under control and then clips it forward. Looking for the exploit the pace of Ablade down the right-hand side. Carlisle try and get back onto it with him back out on the right touchline. Keeps it in play. 
passes it in field to McGill, looking to pick out Ablade. Lots of pressure on him. Carlo not getting the free kick when they might have felt they should. Ablade certainly, but the referee playing on. Langello passes in field to Dan Martin, anchoring along with Liam Coyle in the Accrington midfield. Fairly youthful across the pitch, actually, Accrington. The striker low is 27. I don't think there's another player on the pitch for them over the age of 23, which uh, talks about the youth that they've got in their team. Played forwards there by Holy. It was a bit of a rash one, but Harris will pick it up for Carlisle. Gives it to Robinson in a very advanced left wing-back position here. His ball over the top, though. Nothing Coyote could do with that one. One bounce through to the goalkeeper. BBC Radio Cambria Sport live at the Wham Stadium. Carlisle United goalless at the moment. A side who were in their position in League One last year with United looking on enviously. This year, the two have swapped over during the summer break after United's playoff win in Accrington's relegation. Free kick, though, given for a fairly cynical tackle in the middle of the uh, United half there just to break up Accrington's potential break. Yeah, I think both centre-forwards from either team both look like a, they're causing a real handful and it could be a long night for both defend, both sets of defenders at the moment because they're, they're putting pressure on, they're battling for every ball and, and I think at the moment with Lowe and Coyote, they're both coming out on top. Yeah, Mellish on the left of the back three and I suppose Finn back at right wing back, the only familiar players in United's back line. Goalkeeper changed two of their centre-halves to the left wing back. Almost all of the midfield, ball was driven to, oh dear me, that is so wild. Nolan must have taken that on from 40 yards against a six-foot, nine-inch goalkeeper. That And it was nowhere near. That that was rash. Um, yeah, that's rash is one way of saying it. Um, he, he only had two strides and then struck it. It, it. it wasn't as if he had a big run-up as though he, w he was going to try and strike the ball that way as well. Trying to catch out Thomas Holy, who's... I can't think of a kind of way to say it other than that he does have a rick in him Coyote just winning another header there but Accrington clear Mellish returns it he, he can have a rick or a rash moment in him uh, Thomas Holy but I would be very surprised if a goalkeeper of that size would be caught out from 40 yards especially with a free kick under hit like that one not a great back pass to him there and he's done well to clear that under pressure finds touch and will be a throw into Accrington but that more down to the ball into him throw into the home side on the near touch line Quirk to take it down the right hand side gives it down the line can play in the centre of midfield United looking to play it off the man gets it to Coyote first ball he's had to deal with at his feet and he's not really managed to nice little pirouette in there from McCallum but I think he just turned into the tackle and Odadoyan gets it away down the right hand side will it stay in play it has Lowe gets there again driving at that byline looking to get into a crossing position looks to cut it back gets Akron to the corner yeah, I think that's a few times now they've got down that right and uh, left hand channel of Carlisle there, right? And um, he's looking to try and get to the touchline and put balls in. He, he's looked very dangerous so far. Yeah, I wonder if the idea with them is that Wood sort of breaks in from that number 10 role and Lowe goes out and feeds. I wonder if that's what they're looking to almost yeah, do and have him. It, it seems Because he's way. never in the middle, is he? The number no. nine, Lowe. Here comes the ball into the penalty area, and oh, towards the edge of the penalty area, rather. It was a very good shot, actually, from Dan Martin. Let that one fly from the edge of the box. Glad it didn't go in there, because it really caught me out in terms of how excited I got by it, because it was a heck of a strike from the edge of the area. Yeah. Corner routine that caught Carlisle out and me. It was definitely something that's worked on, because they'd set it up. Um, they did get out to it well, Carlisle, but it, it wasn't far away. The gentleman who in front of us has just said he can't head a ball, as in that's why he keeps coming out wide, potentially... He's done all right so far. The referee's just spotted something at the moment. Has somebody got a knock on the head? Is there a bit of blood or something like I that? I think it's a complaint about um, he thought he was fouled before in the middle of the park. Oh, McCalmont did go down and did turn to the ref as they broke forwards. Has he got a yellow card or has he just been told no more? Clearly the edict on zero tolerance for dissent, not quite making it through to... The EFL trophy as the ball's clipped out to the left wing by Thomas Holy. Underneath it, Coyote. Levered off the ball. It's the first time he's not won ahead of it. Neither did the centre half. Carlo get it to Able. Played around the corner. Able caught as he gets it to McCalmont. Left hand side of the area. Cuts it back. Chance for Coyote. Good save the goalkeeper. Full to the right hand side and Finn back looked to find Coyote again. And Accrington clear. But that was a real moment for JJ Coyote in only the 13th minute of this match. Shooting through on goal. Well played to him. Able fouled as Carlo try and come forwards again. Really good play there between. Now played him a Calmont down the left. Yeah, I don't think he could have done much more. I, th I think he, he he did everything right, really. It was just a shame that the only way he could squeeze his shot through in the end was through the defender's legs, and it, it just went straight at the keeper. The keeper made a good save, but um, 
great bit of play. Like I said, he didn't win the header, but the defender didn't. So he's, he's causing all kinds of havoc by by just stopping that defensive header and, and putting pressure back on. And, and they're getting runners off him. So straight away, what, how good must that be as you're one of them attacking players and you know you can gamble and go beyond the ball because you know he's going to be there with his presence it's like Carlisle have just gone three dimensional getting yeah. Coyote in the team mm -hmm. honestly it's like they've been playing with an art you know a leg tie behind their back with not just not having that presence not you know Ryan Edmonton such a, a good willing lad and he's a good footballer but he just doesn't naturally fit in the central you know lone striker role yeah look and we're nearly 15 minutes into the game and all of a sudden this back four of Atkinson are going to drop off Free kick then to Carla United from the right-hand side. Swung in by Robinson at the near post. Drops to a Carlisle man in there. Ellis gets a shot away. I think it'll get behind for a corner. It does. Carlisle corner. Not the best free kick, actually, from Robinson out on that left-hand side. Looked to really go for it and almost miskicked it. You kind of... It was a pull. Carlisle and Barrow, exclusively live. BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. Yeah, we'll come back here to Holker Street, second half action, about to get underway here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport on DAB Plus and on medium wave frequencies. Cal United, uh, Cal United against Accrington Stanley continuing on our FM and Freeview channel. Uh, currently 0-0 at present, 15 minutes played in the first half there. Blackpool have made a change at half-time. Matty Virtue has made way. He's been replaced by the midfielder Tashin Oakley Booth in the second half he spent time alone at Lincoln uh, City last season he's just come on now to make uh, his second appearance for Blackpool this season but certainly in, in terms of how that first half went Jason Walker it, it's going to take a big effort now they need to, to change things around fastball in the second half it is but the positive thing is only 1-0 Adam and it's there's, they haven't played great and they can only go up from here and you get at them, you get you put pressure on that centre back, and anything come. You need. To, I know there's not much of a crowd here, but still a thousand fans here. You get get these fans on you, something to shout about, and yeah, anything can change. And they, they are there for the taking. They still score a goal against these. And we'll get things back underway, attacking from right to left in this second half. They've got to throw in deep inside the Blackpool half over on this left hand side. Elliot Newby's going to leave it for Rory Feely to be the man to take. Everyone else making the moves inside the penalty area. 30 seconds into this second half here at Holker Street. Feel his throw into the box, easily dealt with there by Et Petite. Comes straight back to Feely. And his ball forward is cut out very well there by Jensen Weir. I'll get it back again, though. Rory Feely back outside to Tyrrell Warren on this left-hand side. And his ball forward easily dealt with again by... Doug Tharm at the back, James Chester battling to try and win possession back for Barrow, but here come Blackpool now wading forward with the goal scorer Sonny Carey and Deb Bell has made a great run in behind the Barrow back line here, the flag stays down it's flipped across into the penalty area here for Owen Dale, just couldn't get the shot away, still in possession inside the Barrow box, he's been forced back by Tyrrell Warren, eventually it comes out to Jensen Weir on this right hand side, into Tharm Tharm's ball forward Again now to Oakley Booth, who's just come on at half-time, holding it up by the corner flag. Threads it back inside again here now for Jensen Weir. Now Kenny Dougal, he goes back to the halfway line for Et Petita. Barrow surviving that mini-scare there, but Blackpool still in possession. Yeah, it come from James Chester. I think he wanted a foul on the on the halfway line. It was, it was never a foul. and Yeah, a good break by Blackpool, but to be fair again... I, I think he's done well tonight as well, Rory Feely, good, good tackle on Dembele. Tharm knocks it outside him now here for Oakley Booth, who sends it into the box, cut out by Tyrrell Warren and Robbie Gotson, eventually clear it over the halfway line and the ball will go back into the Blackpool half, does trip down a play for a Blackpool throw-in. She's taken by Et Petita into the penalty area, it goes to his goalkeeper Richard O'Donnell. Cross to Doug Tharm on this right-hand touch line. Sends it forward into Oakley Booth. Now it's back with Et Petita. Back into the feet of Kenny Dougal. Now outside it goes for Callum Connolly and the Blackpool standing captain will just knock it out to Dembele over on that left-hand touch line. Still 0-0 the scoreline. It's still 1-0 to Blackpool here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. We've played three minutes 
in this second half. Outside it goes now to Farm, inside to Epitita. Just approaching the halfway line, plays a 1-2 with Kenny Dougal. Now Epitita will get it into the feet of Dan Bailey, who's brought down there by Tyrrell Warren. That'll be a free kick to Blackpool inside the barrel half on the centre circle. Yeah, it was a foul, you can see straight away, sharp as anything, Dembele, he just takes his touch one way and sends the defender the other, it's, it's, it's good play. I'd, I'd like to see him in a, not, not that it's a, not a competitive game, but in a league game and where he's really fired up for it, because I think he could be a fantastic signing for them. Yeah, especially at League One level, as Doug Farm knocks it inside again here for Kenny Dougal. Out the way you cross to the left-hand side for Dominic Thompson, who brings the ball forward here now for Blackpool towards the corner of the barrel penalty area. Sends it outside him, and now it's threaded inside again here now for Kenny Dougal. Into the feet of Oakley Booth, and now out to Doug Tharp, to Jensen Weir. Weir, back inside it goes again here for Kenny Dougal. Blackpool just knocking the ball around well. Dembele. Comes back outside again to Tash and Oakley Booth, and now it's into Jensen Weir. Inside it goes again here for Dougal. Back it goes again to Dougal, now at Petita. It's uh, Connolly. Again, it's just brilliant possession football here from Blackpool. Just really much making Barrow chase the ball around at the minute. It is, yeah. They're all comfortable on the ball, every single one of them, and you can see the patterns of play that, they've, that they're obviously working on, and when, when they get it on the right-hand side, they switch it and get it out to go to the left and then come back again. It's, it's fantastic to watch it. It's really, it's really, nice. it's really good football. So again, it's Dougal into the feet of Callum Connolly. Outside to Dominic Thompson. Thompson again will go back to Connolly. Now back to Epitita on the halfway line. Cross it goes to Doug Farm, who brings it over the halfway line for Blackpool and then checks back, knocks it into the middle for Dembele and then back to Epitita, into the feet of Dougal. Dougal lifts it over the top and that's just going to run into the hands of Josh Lewis in the barrel goal. Yeah, they must have kept the ball there for a good two, three minutes and it's, it, it, like I said before, it's good to watch and as soon as Tharm gets that ball on this right-sided centre-half, uh, you can see Sonny Carey, he's the one that goes in behind from the from the left wing, which leaves Thompson on the far side that we've seen Dougal switch it to, out to him as well, but he tried the little one to uh, carry there. A foul on Sam Foley will be a free kick to Barrow. Foley's going to leave here, I think, for Tyrrell Warren to be the man to take, and he knocks it inside for James Chester. Chester, outside it goes to Rory Feely, into Courtney Duffus, and then back it goes again to James Chester. An experienced defender will just knock it into the feet of Sam Foley, back to James Chester, now into Tyrrell Warren. Bobby Gotts, good ball forward, Elliot Ruby will chase onto it on this left-hand side here now for Barrow, approaching the edge of the penalty area. Back it goes again to Robbie Gotts. Corner of the box, just looking for a chance to deliver. Has to go back outside again, Elliot Newby back in possession. Blackpool have thrown bodies right the way back here inside the Barrow half as Robbie Gotts delivers it into the box, cleared away, brought down on the chest of Jed Garner. A few shots of handball there for Blackpool, not given. Stevenson, now Foley. Outside it goes to Tyrrell Warren now, and now it's into the feet of Robbie Gotts. Now Sam Foley. Back it goes again to Warren. Inside it goes for Garner. Cushion ball into Robbie Gotts. Chips into the box. Slice clearance. Comes to Gotts. Inside to Garner. Barrow again unable to get the shot away. Blackpool clear. In the end, David Warrell has to knock it all the way back to Josh Lillis in the barrel goal. Lifts it high. Doug Farm gets underneath it. Now Jensen Weir. It's a bad header backwards from him. Goes out of play for a barrel throwing. Yeah, good play down the left, keeping the ball as well. Barrow, that's, that's much better. Would have liked to have seen Newby cross the ball. He's one-on-one -on -one with the defender. We know he can go either way. He's got to, he's got to try, try and commit him a little bit more. It just seems to be the case of just no one willing to, to take a shot on, isn't it? I mean, we, we saw at the weekend how, you know, pot shot, as much as it was, can end up being that touch of quality. It just It seemed that people were afraid to have a go there. Yeah, especially when you're in and around that box. Throw from Rory Feely, touched on by James Chester, now Sam Foley. 
on to Stevenson. Back into the area it goes. Cleared away again. Feely. Now Elliot Newby. Great turn there from Newby. Corner of the box. Whips it into the area. Cleared away by Epitita. That drops out of play for a barrel throw. -in. Yeah, held his hand up in apology there. He had a lot of space. He hes slightly hesitated, which then closed the angle down. He should have whipped it in straight away. He knows that. You can see that. And that's why he's apologising to Jed Garner. But a lot better. Cuts inside, great turn and a bit of movement. You just need both strikers doing it, both strikers gambling. Still no sign of any movement from the barrel dugout. It's James Chester into the feet of Lucas Stevenson, the two deadline day arrivals. Now it's back with the barrel goalkeeper, Josh Lillis. Lifts the ball high, goes 2-5 high for Courtney Duffus, cleared away. Sam Foley chests it down now. Courtney Duffus is brought down there. It'll be a free kick. It's Doug Farmer who's involved, and that's hence the reaction from the supporters. He's on a yellow card already, Doug Farm, the, the Blackpool defender. Yeah, good play by Foley, picking up the second ball, chest it, it was a foul, but it's, it's never a second yellow card. If you get a second yellow card for that, you, you get them all game, but no, it's not a yellow card. But yeah, it's, it's another foul against him, though, and you've got to get around him, like I said, in the first half. Be a free kick around 40 yards from goal here. Sam Foley standing over it, hands on hips at the minute. Everyone else backing away towards the penalty area. Elliot Newby has just peeled right out to this left hand side, and at the minute he's in acres of space on this left hand side. Elliot Newby for Barrow. Nobody in a tangerine shirt has even picked him up, and it is sprayed straight out to Elliot Newby. Newby is cross charged down there by Dem Burley. And it's back into the feet of Tyrrell Warren. Warren threads the ball through, and that's just going to run all the way through on a play for a goal kick to Blackpool. Yeah, again, uh, just looking at his reaction, he's, he's disappointed with his delivery, and rightly so. If anything, he could have probably faked the defender that time because it's, it's a winger coming out to close him, not a defender. He could have just chopped inside, but yeah, at least get, he's getting on it a lot more and he's creating a little bit now. It's one of those, wasn't it, where maybe they took a bit too long to to play the ball to him because, I mean, we spotted it straight away and they held it for too long, didn't they? Yeah, I think they did. I don't know if if they had to wait for the referee's whistle or not. I wasn't sure. I didn't even hear it, to be, to be fair. Stig Farm gets the booze and he lifts the ball forward into the barrel half, runs out of play and it's going to be a, a throw-in to Barrow, which is taken there by... Tyrrell Warren brought down on the chest of Courtney Duffus he goes down again on the halfway line and again it's Doug Farm involved and now Jensen Weir has just thrown himself in there it's going to be a free kick to Barrow and the referee King just to make sure that everyone's behaving themselves last thing we want to see is it starting to spiral out of control yeah I think it was something or nothing I think Weir I'm not 100% sure he we heard the whistle and just tried to carry on a little bit but it, it was something or nothing. But, like, again, there, it's into Duffus's feet. We, we, he can hold the ball up really well. And first half, we're just launching it to his head. Didn't work much better. He's, that's two fouls already he's gone in the second half. So I'll have it now with Rory Feely. It's a bit of a wild one there for him. He miscontrolled the ball. Had to dive into a tackle with his second ball. Stevenson looking for David Worrell. And it's now into the feet there of the goalkeeper... Richard O'Donnell sends it across to Doug Farm. And it's cleared away there by Dembele onto the head of James Chester. Now Sam Foley flips it on there for Tyrrell Warren. Back to Sam Foley. Inside it goes again to James Chester and now into Lucas Stevenson. Outside it goes to Rory Feely now for Barrow. Brings it over the halfway line. Plays a 1-2 with David Worrell, and again dives into a challenge, Rory Feely. Stevenson will bring it down under control. It's inside to Tyrrell Warren. Now the referee is going to call a halt to proceedings here. Asking for another ball, the referee. <laughs> Must have been from the challenge there from Rory yeah, Feely. I can I only think, think of it. Yeah. Is that we are going to see a, a couple of Blackpool changes in the offing here now. Knocked down at the feet of Lucas Stevenson. Now James Chester, one two with Rory Feely. And it comes outside here to Tyrrell Warren, just behind the halfway line here for Barrow, inside his own half. 
BBC Radio Cumbria Sport here at Honker Street. Barrow trailing by one goal to nil. Played 58 minutes in this EFL Trophy opening group stage encounter. As the ball goes forward again, it's headed away by Doug Tham. And the play goes for a barrel throw in. Now let's see that double change from Blackpool very, very shortly. Barrow are taking the throwing quickly, so it won't be made as of yet. Sam Foley. Nice little touch out to his left-hand side. It's Elliot Newby into the box. Great touch by Jed Garner. Now Robbie Gotts pulls it back, and it's blocked out of play by Doug Farm. It's going to be a barrel corner. Yeah, again, it's all down this left-hand side again. Uh, fantastic play. That was one-touch football. That much better, and it's right in front of this crowd as well. And you can see them, they're, they're, they're up for it again now. Blackpool were about to make the changes, but I think they're not going to bother as they are defending a corner. The referee had just indicated to the bench for the changes to be made, but they've ignored that. Corner swung into the box. It's headed on by James Chester. Doesn't quite land. Flicked back into the penalty area again here from Barrow. Comes to David Worrell in the end, who gets a shot away, but it's a scuffed one into the hands of Richard O'Donnell. Long clearance onto the halfway line. Straight onto the head there of Robbie Gotts for Barrow. Now James Chester into Lucas Stevenson, out to the left-hand side it goes here, and David Worrell now carrying it forward, threaded into Jed Garner. Him and Courtney Duffus both colliding with each other, and in the end Blackpool can bring it away. Courtney Duffus wins it back, though, for Barrow. Back out to David Worrell again, carrying the ball forward towards the corner of the box, sends it outside to Duffus, delivered into the area, Garner stretches out a foot, can't make contact though, it bounces across him, and Blackpool clearing out of play. Great, great movement again from Barrow. It was, yeah, the last five minutes been all Barrow and much better. Than no surprise to see Doug Tharm is being removed from the play here now for Blackpool. He's going to be replaced by Matthew Pennington here, their second change. And the boos ringing out from the Barrow supporters. I think there'll definitely have been some concern there from Neil Critchley and his, his coaching team that Doug Tharm could have been removed in other ways. Yeah, the last thing you want in these games going down to 10, well, in any game really, is going down to 10 men and Critchley's recognised that and, and rightly so. He's, He's probably one, maybe, yeah, probably one foul away from probably getting that second yellow, so it's a, it's a correct call. And the other change that's being made is Kwaku Donka coming on to make his first team debut, the under-18 graduate for Blackpool, only signed professional forms this summer to play for the under-21s. He's going to come on in place of Jensen Weir. I think Blackpool were wanting to make another change over on that far side, but... They've taken too long making it, and the referee's ordered for them to to get on with play. Up around there by Dembele, lifts it forward, it's going to be brought back for a foul on Dembele, free kick to Blackpool. Yeah, just going back to Barrow there, much better, they're on every second ball, picking it up, Gotts winning header on, on the halfway line, it's brilliant, much better, and great cross by Duffers, and I think Garner did actually get a little touch, he just couldn't get enough on it, but much better play by Barrow. It's going to be a free kick to Blackpool just in front of the halfway line. We're going to see that further change now made here. And it's Dembele who's going to make way. And coming on in his place is Killian Kowasi, the former Sutton United forward. Making his Blackpool debuts, 46 appearances, four goals for Sutton. And he's going to come on now with a, an opportunity here against this barrel back line. Dembele just hobbles his way to the touchline, but he has been a thorn in Barrow's side tonight, hasn't he? As Blackpool take the free kick quickly, and it's Sonny Carey puts it across the face of goal out for a goal kick. Yeah, that was lucky. Uh, just didn't connect with it, Carey, there with his left foot, but great, uh, quick free kick. Uh, but, yeah, going back to Dembele, he's, he's looked sharp and, and everything like that, like, like you'd expect him to, and like he was when he was 16. You, you can tell he had a bit. You can see he's got that ability still, and it's fantastic to see him play. Ball sent forward by Barrow, but it's Connolly there to knock it back to his goalkeeper. O'Donnell, a long clearance forward, back onto the halfway line. It's touched on there by Kowasi, it's cleared by James Chester. That's just going to run again towards the touchline, goes on a plane. It is going to be a goal kick 
to Blackpool. 63 minutes played here, still Barrow nil. Blackpool 1 on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports. Still 0-0 in our FM commentary. Accrington against Carlisle. As it's Blackpool in possession. Knocked into the feet there of Epitita. Now Pennington. Pennington again back to Epitita on the edge of his own penalty area. Still no sign of any kind of movement on that barrel bench. So Pete Wilde still very much looking for the team that he has starting the game to, to be the team to turn things around for them here. Yeah, they've got, they've got to have that 10, 15, 20 minutes to prove that they are, and they have done, to be fair, first 15 minutes, it's been, it's been all right this, this second half, and there were a lot more intensity, it just maybe needs a couple of fresh legs in about five five minutes' time. Well, box around again on the halfway line, and it's Dougal back into the feet now of Oakley Booth, and now it's into Pennington, Pennington goes back to Epitator on the edge of his own penalty area. Freds the ball through to the halfway line here for Owen Dale, who gets chopped up there by Robbie Gotts, goes to ground, and it will be a free kick for Blackpool. You still lead by one goal to nil. The goal coming just before half time. Sonny Carey on the 45th minute, giving Blackpool the lead. Back here now with Connolly. Inside it goes to Epitita, and now Pennington again. Back inside it goes to Epitita. Cross now to Kenny Dougal, who just brings the ball forward, the Australian international. On to Tash and Oakley Booth. Barrow standing off at the minute. It's just given Blackpool so much space to move into the penalty area. Tash and Oakley Booth puts it across, blocks. Back inside it goes, saved by Josh Lewis. It was Pennington who got the shot away. Still not fully cleared. Kenny Dougal now will take the shot on. And a play goes. It's taking a deflection. It'll be a Blackpool corner. Yeah, but it came from from what you said, Adam. It's just sitting there. They were just standing there and sitting back. And it, it was really weird. Like, they were passing the ball and then Barrow weren't even sprinting towards it to try and close it down. It was a strange one, but uh, got away with it again. And great save by Lillis. Very much surviving there, Barrow. It's another opportunity here for Blackpool. 65 minutes played here at Holker Street. Corner about to be delivered into the box again plenty of plays along the line there of Josh Lewis's goal they're all cramped inside that six yard box as the corner goes right into the area Kawasi got his flick onto it in the end it drops wide of goal and out of play for a goal kick yeah got his head on it it only must be a, a yard wide if that's on target it's a goal but going back to that I'm all for keeping your shape you're away from home you've got a, um, a shape to keep and I get it and if you're against the league one side, like we've seen it in the Bolton game, you can't gamble too early in them sort of games, and he was rightly to do that because they were unbelievable. But I think now that again you're getting in this trophy, in this EFL Cup, whatever it is, you've got you've got to go for it. You're an hour into a game, and you you've just got to push on a little bit, just come out of what you what you've been told to do, and just go for the game. Here's Rory Feely with a throw in four barrels in front of the halfway line. Throws it back into the feet of James Chester. Now across to Tyrrell Warren. Over the halfway line then. Outside to Elliot Newby. Inside it goes now to Robbie Gotts. Cross to Rory Feely on the halfway line. Turns, knocks it back into the feet again of Josh Lillis, who hits it first time. Right onto the head of Matthew Pennington. Lucas Stevenson flicks it on, but no one in a white shirt able to win the ball. Sam Foley will win the follow-up though and it's now back with Rory Feely back inside to Lucas Stevenson now Tyrrell Warren Warren just holds it up inside to Sam Foley now for Barrow cross it goes to Rory Feely back into Lucas Stevenson it was a heavy first touch and Kenny Dougal just charging to a challenge now Fred's a great ball through here for Owen Dale good defending again there from Barrow first the hold up from Sam Foley and then the challenge from Tyrrell Warren 
Yeah, just like just like the goal in the first half, it comes from Barrow losing possession inside Blackpool's half, and you've seen what they can do on the counter attack. And to be fair, that they'll be disappointed. And you can see, I can see his reaction already. He's, he should be taking a touch and probably just getting his shot away. Another uh, lucky escape for Barrow. That's what we feel inside his own half. Back inside it goes to James Chester, and still no sign of any movement at the minute from the Barrow bench. We've played 68 minutes now here at Holker Street. Bobby Gox into Elliot Newby. Newby holds it up well, lays it down the line till Warren made a good run, but the ball goes out of play and it will be a throw into Blackpool inside their own half, which is going to be taken by Kwaku Donka, the 18-year-old, making his first team debut for Blackpool this evening. Throws the ball forward here for Kawazi. Good challenge on the halfway line there. And now Barrow have it with Robbie Gotts. Has to knock it out to the left to Elliot Newby. Brings the ball forward. Referee waving play on after a foul by Robbie Gotts off the ball. Warren. Now Gotts. Now Sam Foley driving forward from midfield here for Barrow. Gets outside of this left-hand side. Foley delivers it into the penalty area. It's good defending again there by Matthew Pennington. One of the many second-half subs for Blackpool clears it away picked back up again by Elliot Newby he'll drive forward Sam Foley outside him Foley inside to Gotts back it goes to Foley back to Gotts midway inside the Blackpool half Gotts again looking for Courtney Duffers it's cut out there by Pennington and Kenny Dougal will get it back to his goalkeeper O'Donnell good bit of footwork there by Blackpool and now it's Tasha Nokalibuvu comes forward. 69 minutes played, still Barrow nil, Blackpool 1. Here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport, the opening round of games in Group A of the EFL Trophy first round. Of course, not in action today. Liverpool under 21s or Morecambe. You know, the other two sides in competition in Group A. Again, the ball forced back into the Blackpool half, but it's it's Blackpool who are happily just stalking the ball around in, in possession. Eventually will launch it forward, Josh Lewis there to gather it. Yeah, you can see with Blackpool that the minute their centre-back got it there, there was literally three runners going in behind it. It was, it was really good to see, like, they're gambling as well, but it's, I think Barrow are missing a little bit. Just a midfielder to join them, strikers going behind. You've seen it with Foley before when he drove past them both. It creates an opportunity. I think one of the midfielders just got to get beyond the strikers. James Chester on the halfway line into the feet of Rory Feely. Now David Worrell lays it off for Feely, who loses possession and then has to dive into a challenge. Gives away a free kick. And now eventually we are starting to see a bit of movement from that Barrow dugout. Looks like Shona Taluku is being prepared there on the touchline. Is the other person Sam Bray, I think, is it? Um, Sam Bellis, I think. Potentially about to come on to make his Barrow debut. Two of the, the club's B team recruits. So here comes Robbie Gotts again now for Barrow. Brings it over the halfway line, still going with it. Knocks it out to Elliot Newby on this left hand side. Newby inside to Jed Garner, who's forced all the way back to the halfway line. And sends it across to Rory Feely on the right hand side. Now Lucas Stevenson. Looking for David Worrell. Worrell taking a touch. Back it goes to Stevenson. Now back to Rory Feely. Inside to James Chester now. And now across to Tyrrell Warren. Still on the halfway line. Out to Elliot Newby. Now Robbie Dots. Back again to Warren. Trying to shape outside his man Warren there. He's got it into the feet of Jed Garner. Garner again just retreats back and then knocks it into the feet of... James Chester, the experienced defender, will just bring it to the halfway line and knocks it back out to Tyrrell Warren on this left-hand side. He'll drive forward here now for Barrow. He rolls it inside to Robbie Gott. Scott returns it to Warren inside the box, pulls it back. Great effort by Duffer, saved by Richard O'Donnell and Blackpool there to clear it away. The first time that Barrow have opened Blackpool up. Great goalkeeping, keeps it at 1-0.
Yeah, it was a good save, to be fair, but I was literally, when Warren picked it up on the left-hand side, there was nobody in front of him. He was thinking about the backward pass, and I was... Shot from distance, Cannons up the crossbar, and over the bar, and now to play for a goal kick. It was Jed Garner this time having a go. Yeah, I couldn't see who that was, but judging by the shot, I could kind of gather it would be Jed Garner, but going back to that one, there's loads of space, like for Tyrrell Warren, just to drive into, for the little one-two we got, it's fantastic, and Duffers, to be fair, got on his weak foot, got to hit the target, good save. Best moments of the game for Barrow there, inches away from finding that equaliser. Mitch O'Donnell, O'Donnell is going to leave it to Callum Connolly to take the goal kick here, so I wonder if he's maybe picked up a, a bit of a knock in the process of making that save, the Blackpool goalkeeper. Here come Barrow now with Jed Garner. Holds the ball up well. Freds it into Sam Foley. Edge of the penalty area. Foley pulls it back. Shot comes in from Garner and O'Donnell again gets down to make the save. Yeah, he's, he'll be disappointed with that shot, Jed Garner. You know, his, his quality from outside the box, his techniques, he's unbelievable. But, yeah, it just comes again from Foley being close to them strikers. He's not normally the one to do it. We know he likes to drive forward, but that, that's where it's come from. You can see him now. He's, he's trying to urge his team off as well. Look at the gap between the... Foley in the defence, you need everybody needs to get up. Mitch O'Donnell certainly does look in some kind of discomfort inside that penalty area, doesn't he? He was just wincing away when he cleared that ball just before, and you could see him touching towards his knee area, and the ball comes back to him again here, and he has to take a touch to get it under control. I don't know if that's a case of Blackpool just giving him a few touches to see if he's recovered there, but very much looking awkward. Ball cleared forward now here for Blackpool, and it's released. Quacky Duncan on this left-hand side, runs it into the box. That rolls into the hands of Josh Lillis for Barrow. Yeah, that was lucky. He took a, he took a heavy touch there. And otherwise, it would have been a great opportunity for Blackpool. BBC Radio Cumbria Sport here at Holker Street. We've played 74 minutes where it is still Barrow nil, Blackpool 1 on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports. Elliot Newby, inside it goes to Sam Foley, who buys the foul there from Owen Dale, and it'll be a free kick to Barrow on the halfway line. And what look to be changes being made from, from Barrow. It doesn't look as though those changes are anywhere near in the offing now, I think. Very much lengthy discussions going on inside the dugouts between Jason Taylor, Sean Etaluku, and Sam Bellis, who have been stood in there. Yeah, they've been talking for a while, but I think that comes when Barrow have a little bit of opportunity and they maybe give them another little chance, but I think Etaluko's definitely coming on and Bellis has got his bid back on now, so I don't know, I think he'll come on and it's a good opportunity for both for both lads. Here yeah, come Barrow now with David Worrell, sends the ball forward, it's cut out by Dominic Thompson, stretching to try and keep it in play, it's gone out, it will be a throw into Barrow, and we are about to see Sean Etaluko come on now to make his second First team appearance, he got the run out against Stockport in that 1 0 defeat earlier on in the campaign. He's about to be introduced into the mix, although Barrow have taken the throw in quickly. James Chester knocks it into Robbie Gotts now to Tyrrell Warren. Warren sends the ball through, looking for the run there of Courtney Duffers, but runs out of play. It's going to be a goal kick to Blackpool. I would imagine now we are going to see at least one of those changes. In fact, both of them are about to be made. Elliot Newby is the man that's going to make way here for Sean Etaluku to come on to make his Holker Street debut. It's going to be his second first-team appearance. But Sam Bellis is about to be brought in to make his Barrow debut, scored in pre-season for the club. And he's going to come on in place of Courtney Duffus. So, first team debut for Sam Bellis, the former Manchester City and Southampton trainee. And Jed Garner just going through some instructions with Adam Temple on the touchline there. And as we said earlier, it's, it's a big opportunity for these B team players, isn't it? Because you know some of these more established first team players, you could probably say, just haven't quite performed out there tonight. No, yeah. I was going to say it before um, when they came on. It was just it's one of them. We, we go through it with James and Grandy at the at the start of the show, and it was, do you approve of these sort of competitions? Is it whatever? But it gives these lads an opportunity. That's this is what they want. This is will they get much league action at 
not right now they won't at the minute and these are the sort of games that, they'll, that they will get so it's a fantastic opportunity for them and like you said Donk or for uh, Blackpool as well 18 years old I think did you say it was his debut as well and it's it's fantastic for them as well so yeah it gives them an opportunity and hopefully they take it it's have it with Lucas Stevenson back across it goes here now for Tyrrell Warren outside to Etaluku now Certainly, uh, both him and Bellis very much impressing in pre-season weren't they Bellis who took his goal very well in that second half against Fylde earlier in the campaign and Etaluku on many occasions looking very much in place in this barrel side wasn't it yeah, I've seen a lot, yeah, we've seen a lot more of Etaluka, and that's why you can, I can comment more on him. Bellis did well against Vial, but I've, I've been impressed by Etaluka as well. He's, his energy up and down this left left flank is, is brilliant, and he works hard for the team, and that's what you're asking for these young lads. Here we go, knocks it back again to James Chester. Outside to Sam Foley, lifts the ball over the top, looking for Bellis there, but it just runs away from him, goes on a play, and it's going to be a, a goal kick to Blackpool. Clock ticks on, 78 minutes played here, still Barrow nil. Blackpool won, don't forget, in the event that Barrow do find an equaliser here in this game and it does finish as a draw after 90 minutes, then we will have a penalty shootout to decide who will pick up the bonus points as part of the EFL rules. This is a group stage. One for an out to this right inside here for Donker. Plays it into the feet of Owen Dale. Ball again looking for Donker on this right-hand side. Up against Etaluku, slips. And it goes on a play and it will be a throw into Barrow inside their own half. 79th minute here. BBC Radio Cumbria Sport at Holker Street where it's still Barrow nil. Blackpool won. Cal United still nil-nil approaching half-time in their game against Ackerton Stanley as the ball lifted forward. That's just going to run through into the hands of Richard O'Donnell, who's been very, very crucial for Blackpool in the second half, made a very good stop to deny Courtney Duffus just before. And the crossbar still rattling for the follow-up from Jed Garner. Yeah, we know what it's like when he hits them. Yeah, he hit them, uh, I think it was Sutton, wasn't it? He hit the bar as well, and I think that's still rattling as well. But, yeah, he's, he's made a crucial save as well. But then again, you can say the same about Lillis in that second half. That was a great save as well, so... Two good sides by the keepers. It's back with O'Donnell. Knocks it into the feet of Kenny Dougal. Back it goes again to O'Donnell for Blackpool. Lifted high towards the halfway line. Lucas Stevenson ducks his head down and then flicks it on. But that's just going to run all the way through on a play for a goal kick to Blackpool. Closing stages here at Holker Street. Looks as though Blackpool preparing their final change of the evening and it's Owen Dale who's going to make way and he's going to be replaced by Albie Morgan so midfield they're coming on for the forward I wonder if they're now just deciding to tuck things in here just to try and see things out now with that that one goal lead it's like Kawasi is going to be kept up there on his own doesn't it Donkers tucks really much out wide on this right hand side it does look as though they are going to go with just that lone striker. Yeah, I think it is. 0-0 at half-time between Cal United and Accrington Stanley in the EFL Trophy Group stage. Don't forget, following the conclusion of this game, full second-half commentary on all frequencies to come from the WAM Stadium. Barrow still in possession here with Jed Garner inside the Blackpool half. Touches it into the box and it's cleared away by Ed Petita down a play for a throw-in to Barrow. Still in this contest, nine minutes left. Sam Foley, inside it goes now to Jed Garner. Just carries out to this left-hand side, Etaluka in front of him, Garner ignores him, goes back to Sam Foley. Foley again, driving from midfield. Into Etaluku. Barrow looking for that one moment of quality here to find an equaliser. James Chester looking to provide it, but his ball forward is cut out. Once again, it's Blackpool who come forward. Threaded out to this far side. It's Thompson delivers it into the box. In the end, wrong foot himself, puts it on a plane. It's going to be a, a goal kick to Barrow. Yeah, he showed great pace, to be fair, down the left did uh, Thompson, but 
yeah, it must have, it must have clipped his right foot before his left. We've all been there, and it's an embarrassing moment, but we've all been there. He kind of outpaced himself, didn't he? You could say. <laughs> yeah, I thought Feely had blocked it, but yeah, clearly not. Josh Lewis preparing to take the goal kick here. We've got eight minutes remaining here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports. And clearance forward right onto the head there of Dominic Thompson. Cannons off David Worrell now. Kenny Dougal will get in there and Lucas Stevenson again just throws himself into a challenge. Wins Barrow will throw in on this touch line. David Worrell not happy with something that's gone on in there and the referee now keen to have a word with Dominic Thompson and the yellow card is produced to the Blackpool winger. Yeah, I don't know what that was for. I couldn't see him. Maybe he held the ball and then threw it away. I'm not sure. I think that's what, what Worrell was going on about. But I didn't see him. If he has it... You know, you get the yellow cards for that these days. Great challenge by Jed Garner. Knocks it across to Tyrrell Warren. Bit more intensity here from Barrow in the closing stages. Outside it goes to Etaluku. Good challenge there by Donker. Now Sam Foley. Bringing out to this far side. Touches it on to Jed Garner. Comes back again to Etaluku. Now James Chester. Out to Rory Feely. Now Lucas Stevenson. Bring the ball forward here now for Barrow into the Blackpool half. Delivers it into the box. Comes off the top of the head of Et Petita. Drops down for Etaluku on the edge of the area. Fed out to Tyrrell Warren now for Barrow. Approaching the touch line. Buys the challenge there from the Blackpool midfielder Oakley Booth. In fact, it's Donker. Sorry, you made the challenge. Goes on a play for a Barrow throw deep inside the Blackpool half. We've got six minutes remaining here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport. Barrow with a throw in. Plenty of players inside that penalty box for Rory Feely to aim for, and it is that long throw into the box, onto the head of Et Petita. Etaluku jumps up well, flicks it into the middle, but it's cleared away. Tyrrell Warren losing out, Blackpool now wade forward here, and it's Albie Morgan on his own, slides it across, Kowasi's made a great run into the area, and Killian Kowasi on his Blackpool debut will finish it off, a great counter-attack, Two players involved, Morgan into Kawasi, and the game is done now for Barrow with five minutes left. It's Barrow nil, Blackpool two. Yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a good play by Morgan and Kawasi. I guess so you could say that from a Blackpool point of view, but it's poor from Tyrrell Warren. He he was literally 70 30 for that ball, and he he knows you can see he's hanging his head now. He's he should never let let Morgan get to that ball. He's just just watching it, and Morgan's on the on the move. It's, it's, it was bad defending, really. Yeah, Barrow again shooting themselves in the foot. And it's Blackpool leading by two goals to nil now here. Looking in a great position now to progress into the next round of the EFL trophy with that victory here tonight. Barrow, they've still got the two games remaining on the back of here. They face Morecambe on the 10th of October before that final game at the meeting with Liverpool under 21s here at Holker Street. But I mean, in terms of it, I mean, 10 changes made. We were saying at the top of the show, it's opportunities for players. And again, we're just harking on to the fact that some of these players just have not stepped up to the plate tonight for Barrow. Yeah, and you can say oh, they've not, not played many games, and but that's I don't think that's an excuse. It's They're all fit enough, fit enough lads, and I just don't think they've, they've pushed themselves enough. I would, could go Lucas Stevenson, maybe uh, Sam Foley in this second half. Um, Rory Feely, I think, has done well, but he's been playing anyway. And yeah, but it's just one of them where you've got to take your chance a little bit more. You've got to, you've got to impress. You've got to show what you can do a little bit more than what they have done tonight. And this, it will be food for thought for the barrel manager Pete Wilde. We'll get you that reaction as soon as we can following the conclusion of this game. I'll imagine that it would be played out after the conclusion, of course, of Cali United's game against Accrington Stanley, nil-nil at half-time in that game. Barrow preparing another change over on that far side. Looks like it's going to be a first-team debut for Owen Bray, another one of the B-team recruits. Pete Wilde opts in to give Paul Farman, Dean Campbell and George Ray an extended break. As we were saying before, on the back of today, it's 11 days before Barrow find themselves in action again with that trip to Newport on the 16th of September. Etaluku into Sam Foley. And it's Tyrrell Warren. And cross it goes to David Worrell over on the right-hand side. Back it goes to Josh Lillis. 
Josh Ellis really has been helpless for both goals, haven't they? Just two, two very well taken finishes, but both shouldn't really have got got to that instance. Yeah, exactly. Just both and barrel mistakes, and you can you can see he's, he's actually arguably played well as well with that with that save. What when he's been called upon, he's and with with what he's done, he's been he's been good. He's done everything right, and that save was was a great save. But it's just yeah, he's been exposed by his by his defenders, unfortunately. But I say defenders. I'm sorry. It was it was lost in the in the barrel in the Blackpool uh, final third as well. So. You can say strikers or whatever it was as well. Lucas Stevenson is going to make way to be replaced by Owen Bray. It's, as you say, probably the one one player in the first half that, that could really take any presence from his performance. He really has been a... He's put the effort in in that centre of midfield. It's just the rest of the players around him, isn't it? They just haven't stepped up to him. Yeah, he's put himself about, made tackles, and to be, to be honest, Adam, that's, that's minimum, that's what you should be. That's, that should be a given in every game, that you're grafting and working and intensity and putting yourself about, but yeah, he's done it the most, and it, it's like you say, he stood out the most, and that's why. David Wall inside towards Owen Bray, challenge comes in, it's going to be picked up by Rory Feely to take a throw in here for Barrow midway inside the Blackpool half we've got two minutes plus stoppage time remaining here Barrow nil Blackpool two in the EFL trophy throwing to be taken here by Rory Feely it's a long throw into the box drops down inside the penalty area cleared away right up into the air here again for Rory Feely to hook on too high for Sam Bellis, Etaluka will jump up again brilliantly there, flicks it inside, but that's just going to drop down into the hands of Richard O'Donnell. Yeah, he's, you can see all there, he's got a good leap on him, Etaluka, it's good. I enjoy someone that can jump very high. That's not, that was kind of my forte up front anyway, but uh, no, yeah, he's, he's done, done well in two headers. It's been picked up again here now by O'Donnell. Freds it onto the edge of his own box, touched on by Albie Morgan, who did brilliantly there for the... Second goal for Blackpool, great counter-attacking move, and here he comes again now, carrying the ball forward. He's got conquered outside him, just gone again. Albie Morgan trying that switch ball across, but this time it's cut out by Barrow. Inside to Etaluku, and referee is going to stop play because Barrow have Tyrrell Warren down inside the Blackpool half. And George Ray is getting to his feet, so Roger will be introduced for stoppage time I imagine it'll be Terrell Warren coming off for him yeah I think so I didn't I didn't actually see what happened to be honest but he looks in a little bit of pain that's where in the AFL trophy it's Wimbledon 1 Steve Nidge 1 approaching full time Fleetwood leading 2-0 against the 10 men of Tranmere in the closing stages Forest Green 3 Shrewsbury 0 Gillingham 2 Leighton Orient 1 Northampton 1 Oxford 3 that's the games that gone underway at seven o'clock in the half seven kickoffs. It's Barnsley one, Grimsby nil, Wrexham one, Newcastle nil. Five minutes of added on time to be played at the end of this game. And in the games just about to get underway for the second half, Accrington nil, Carlisle nil, Bolton two, Salford nil, Bristol Rovers three, Cheltenham nil, Crawley two, Charlton two, Harrogate nil, Nottingham Forest on the 21s nil, and Port Vale leading against Crewe by one goal to nil and in our local action Kendall trailing by one goal to nil against Colm that's half time in that game so big 45 minutes for Kendall if they are to keep their unbeaten record going as Tyrrell Warren is back to his feet here he's limping towards the touch line George Ray has just put his bib back on in the in the dugout I wonder if they're just going to allow Tuttle Warren to see out the time now in, in stoppage time. A minute into it now, five minutes of time added on. Josh Lewis sends the ball forward into the Blackpool half. Jed Garner bringing it down on his chest, gets a touch of fortune, bends a shot goalwards, and it's taken well again by Richard O'Donnell in the Blackpool goal. Yeah, it's on his unfavoured right foot but he just tried to start out, out wide of the post just didn't get enough on it and a reminder of the attendance tonight 1,436, 202 of those who have made the trip from Blackpool and they're going to be the ones heading back extremely delighted 
that 2 0 lead here. They're going to be taking the first blood in the AFL Trophy group stages. All heading inside here now on the halfway line, and it's Albie Morgan outside. It goes to Donker. Back inside again to Albie Morgan. Back to Dougal. Morgan again outside to Pennington. And Pennington again inside it goes to Albie Morgan. Back outside to Pennington, who just brings the ball forward, gets the better of Robbie Gotts, and then lays it across to Dominic Thompson over on the left hand side. Blackfield looking for a third. Into the area it goes. It's cleared away by Rory Feely. Goes beyond Jed Garnett. And at Petit and I will pick it up into the middle. It goes and Albie Morgan and now back again to Marvin at Petita. Into Pennington. Pennington outside to Oakley Booth. Inside it goes again now to Albie Morgan. Plays a one-two with Kenny Dougal and then goes back to at Petita. We played three minutes of time earlier on. Two minutes remain here at Holker Street. Barrow trailing by two goals to nil. Oakley Booth now Albie Morgan looking for the runner Kawazi, the scorer of Blackpool's second goal, but that's just going to run back to Josh Lewis to clear it away. Into the head of Pennington. Now Tash and Oakley Booth rides off a couple of challenges. Blackpool just in commanding control now of this game here in the closing stages. Barrow chasing shadows at the minute. Yeah, they're just you can see the 2-0 up the half a yard quicker than Blackpool. Blackpool uh, half, yeah, quicker than Barrow. Barrow just off it a little bit, and yeah, the game's gone really. It's Aluku touching it back to Josh Lewis. Now it's knocked into the feet of Tyrrell Warren. Into the final minute now of stoppage time. Tyrrell Warren back it goes to Josh Lewis. Outside to Rory Feely. Now it's on by Jed Garner to Robbie Gotts. Pushing forward now here for Barrow, Robbie Gotts tries to thread it through, it's intercepted. Sam Foley dives into the challenge, but the loose ball's going to be picked up by Tash and Oakley Booth, and Pennington's made a great run from centre-half here now for Blackpool. Flag goes up against him, free kick. I thought it was offside, I didn't, and I didn't think he was going to give it, but they, they do now, they wait, don't they? But I did think he was like a couple of yards offside, or a yard offside. It's going to be taken by Josh Lewis into the final 30 seconds here don't forget reaction to come from the barrow boss pete wild from the conclusion of that second half between accrington and carlisle united nil nil at the break in that one as josh lewis lifts the ball forward and we feel a challenge with callum connolly handball given against the blackpool captain it will be a free kick but I'm not too sure whether there'll be enough time for Barrow to take this free kick because the clock now ticks on to the 95th minute. Yeah, I think they'll just let him take this last one. That'll be the last attack, I think. <coughs> I'm surprised that if it, that was early on in the second half, that would have been a yellow card. Obviously, he's caught Rory Feely and his hand's clearly up above, above his head as well, so he must have caught him with an elbow. Free kick to be taken by David Worrell. Etaluku's there as well. in the last moment of this game here 30 seconds over the five additional minutes now It'll be Blackpool taking that first blood into the box Tyrrell Warren touches it on it's cleared to the edge of the area hooked back on there by Rory Feely too high there Owen Bray battling away on the edge of the box pokes it back out to David Worrell now it's outside to Sean Etaluku having a run here for Barrow on this right hand side been putting the pressure there by Don Coo. He's done very well there, Etaluku. Goes out of play and it will be a barrel corner. Still we play on. Yeah, he did well. Just taking his man on, going either way and gets a corner for Barrow. Corner to be taken on this right-hand side. David Worrell it is who swings the ball in. Too high there for Rory Feely. It's cleared away and then the referee says that's that. Blows the final whistle. It's Blackpool 
who get the first blood in the AFL Trophy group stage. Barrow on the end of a 2-0 defeat. Mistakes right at the end of both halves. First of all, allowing Sonny Carey all the time in the world to get it under control and bend it low into the bottom corner just before half-time to get Black to a one-goal lead. And then on the 85th minute, a counter-attack over a mistake from Tyrrell Warren allowed Albie Morgan so much time to get through and he laid it off for Killian Kawazi and the former Sutton man was there to slot home the second of the game. They've had bright glimpses, Barrow, at times in this second half. I mean, the first half very much was a write-off, wasn't it, in terms of performance. Second half was a little bit better, you could say, but overall, I think it's fair to say the best team has won this game tonight. Yeah, I agree. First half, nowhere near good enough. Second half showed glimpses of what, what they can do and with, with their one-touch passing, getting in a little bit and driving forward from Foley and stuff. But, yeah, I, don't, I just don't think it was enough at all throughout the 90 minutes and it was relatively comfortable for Blackpool and yeah like you said they, they deserved the win I mean it will be interesting to hear you know Pete Wilde's thoughts on it because very much it is the case isn't it I mean we, we've said it on commentary you know we're not just we're not just saying this on the back of a defeat it's it's very much the case some of these players tonight have been given opportunities but they very clearly haven't taken them it will be interesting I mean the look of his face he does look a far from happy man there as he applauds the, the supporters and the ground stick. Yeah, knowing Pete Wilde, he, he won't be happy at all. And like you say, he's, he'll probably expect more from his players. And the only positive he'll look at is he's got 90 minutes into some of them, 80 minutes into newbie and stuff. And that's going into 11-day 11, 11 break. He'll, he'll want that. And that's probably why he's rested quite a few, because to give these guys 90 minutes. But he'll have wanted more from the, from the players that, that were out there. I mean, that's, that's the big thing, isn't it? I mean, we've, we've said it so many times, haven't we, in, in, in games where you want to be... You've got a big squad, and to be utilising that big squad, you need players to be putting the pressure on, aren't you? Showing that they want to be playing. And, you know, if you're Dom Telford, who's been given the night off tonight, or you're Jamie Proctor, who's been given off the night, night off tonight, you're going to be looking at tonight, you're going to be thinking, well, when we play in 11 days' time, unless I pick up an injury in pre-season or during this break... That's me in that starting eleven. That's me comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want to say it because it sounds. It sounds not great. But yeah, when you look at it like that, it is. They've, they've just won against Harrogate. The team's flying, and it, it, it's tough enough as it is to get in the squad without coming out here tonight and, and not performing at all. That, that glimpses of Jed Garner second half. To be honest, he was trying to get on the ball, but that's that's not his game. He, well, that's his game getting on it. But I mean. He's doing the, the, the midfielder's job there, trying to get on the ball and then create for the strikers, which he should be. He should be that second pass. But um, yeah, I don't. If, like you say, if you're one of them starting eleven from Harrogate, you, you're quite happy that you're not under any pressure starting the next game against Newport. I mean, we don't we don't want people listening in to be thinking that this is all doom and gloom or anything no, not like at all, that. Not but at all. it's. It is hard to find any form of positive from tonight, isn't it? That's that's the worrying thing. Not, I, I don't mean worrying in the sense of it's all going to be doom and gloom from here for Barrow, because as you say, it is such a bright start to the season. But you, know, you want the players to be showing that that push for the shirt, don't you? I'm I'm not in the team at the minute. I'm not considered good enough to play in that victory against Harrogate. But you want them to be showing when they get that chance that they are they are good enough. But tonight they haven't. Absolutely, and it's, it's hard. It's hard to do because I've been there, and like I've been on both sides where you you are starting each game and you are comfortable and you you're flying and stuff. But I've been there where you're not playing and you've got to you've got to approach these games in the, exactly the same manner as if it was a league game. And especially if you're not playing, you've got to you've got to show that bite, that bit of difference that the manager looks and goes, wow, he's. He doesn't want it. He wants to play every single week, and that's, I'm not saying they don't because that's not what it is, and they're never going to ever. Football is never going to be like that. But you've just got to show a little bit more, and show a little bit more of that fight. I don't know what it was tonight, but it was. You could literally say 80 minutes. It, it wasn't. It wasn't good enough. Maybe 10 minute spells. It, it was all right, but I don't. I don't want to be like you say. I don't want to sound too doom and gloom either. But I, don't, I, I can't imagine Pete Wilde will be happy either. And, if he is, and the positives are that, that he has got minutes in their legs for an 11-day break and they can have a rest now, go away and refresh again and go again, then, then fair enough, he'll take the positives out of it. But I can't imagine he'll be too happy with the performance. You know, Battle fans, we'd love to hear your thoughts. 81333, start your message with the word Cymru. You can...